Coming up on the Rockridge Report, we'll take you deeper into the worldwide effects of President Donald Trump's announcement Wednesday to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. And we'll show you the newest addition to weekday mornings and afternoons in Lexington, a school bus for the city's schools. And later, see how Rockbridge is giving back to its older residents this holiday season. And we'll take you inside Rockbridge County's hottest Friday night spot for country music lovers. All that and more coming up on the Rockbridge Report. Live from the campus of Washington and Lee University with news for Rockbridge County, this is the Rockbridge Report. Welcome to the final Rockbridge Report before the new year. I'm Paige Williams. And I'm James Laverty. Senator Al Franken announced his resignation today after several women have accused him of sexual harassment. He gave his announcement on the floor of the Senate. I was, I was shocked. I was upset. But in responding to their claims, I also wanted to be respectful of that broader conversation. Because all women deserve to be heard and their experiences taken seriously. I think that was the right thing to do. I also think it gave some people the false impression that I was admitting to doing things that, in fact, I haven't done. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. This announcement comes two days after Democratic Congressman John Conyers announced his resignation, also amid sexual harassment allegations. Time Magazine has named the Silence Breakers as the 2017 Person of the Year. The silence breakers represent the people around the world who triggered a hashtag MeToo national outcry over sexual harassment. The cover features women who started and contributed to the movement. Time's editor-in-chief said the people who spoke out about harassment have created one of the strongest shifts in our culture in decades. Violence erupted today just a few miles north of Jerusalem and Palestine. The protests follow an announcement that President Donald Trump gave on Wednesday. He said he is formally recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and a number of other Israeli officials are hailing President Trump's decision of moving the American Embassy to Jerusalem. One of these officials is the mayor of Jerusalem who talked with CNN's Becky Anderson about the unity of his city. The city of, the, of, of Jerusalem will never be divided. It will never function as a divided city. It is actually, go back 3,000 years, the city of it's Jerusalem... It's to be divided now, sir. It is not divided. It's one unit. It's uh, one economy. All the uh, uh, holy sites in one square kilometer. Palestinians don't have the same rights of citizenship Becky, here as they are allowed to, if they Israelis want to, and more do. and more do. By the way, more and more Palestinians decide to become uh, civilians of Israel. They have that irrevocable right. And the reality is that we have in one square kilometer more functioning mosques, synagogues, and churches mm. than anywhere in the world. Today, the city is inclusive and open for the benefit of the world to enjoy. Just. Except Palestinians will tell you that they feel that this is an apartheid system being run here. Well, you this is nonsense. This again. is total nonsense. You go to our residents and you see that they work in the city, they get uh, uh, all the services in the city from so why all the are we hospitals. concerned about what's going to happen after Friday prayers then tomorrow? Well, look, there are people that want to incite, um, uh, which is unacceptable, and Israel will not be deterred by violence. We've been tested before in, uh, unfortunately, a few rounds of violence. We will stick to our strategy and not move and convey to the uh, Arab residents around the, uh, around the world, if you want peace, accept if the terms you... that uh, no peace without okay. recognizing let, Jerusalem let as the capital. Last month's election is having ripple effects in Buena Vista, where the newly elected mayor is talking about a possible change at the top of the city administration. Reporter Gus Cross sat down with Buena Vista's mayor-elect, Bill Fitzgerald, to talk about the future of the city. I'm standing outside of Buena Vista City Hall, where several city council seats are soon to change hands 
following last month's election. I talked with mayor-elect Billy Fitzgerald about why he decided to run for mayor. He said he decided last year when the city council gave city manager Jay Scudder an ongoing contract that doesn't require a renewal. Fitzgerald disagrees with this decision and he feels it makes it harder for the city council to end the contract with Scudder. I asked him why and when that contract would need to end. Well, I, I really feel now's the time. Uh, and the reason is, I think for the city to move forward, we need some changes. I think an election, right how it turned out, uh, the citizens want a big change. And I think that's part of the change. Do you think that change starts with a new city manager? Mm -hmm. I reached out to several city council members about the possibility of replacing Scudder. All of the ones I was able to reach said that they didn't have an opinion or that they would not like to comment. The Rockbridge Report will be following the story going into the new year. For the Rockbridge Report, Gus Cross, live in Buena Vista. Back to you. Thank you, Gus. And in other local news, 50 Ways Rockbridge is a liberal advocacy group in Rockbridge County that will be celebrating its one-year anniversary next week. The group was born in wake of President Donald Trump's surprising election in 2016 as a way for local citizens to get involved with politics. The group has partnered with local churches and other political organizations to host community discussions with topics ranging from climate change to racism. 50 Ways is also committed to helping the local Democratic Party with campaigns leading up to last month's election. The group will commemorate its birthday with a potluck dinner and a birthday cake next Thursday. Hundreds of Lexington students are taking advantage of the school system's new activity bus this year. It's the first time in decades that the school system has had its own bus, and so far it's been a success. Reporter Alexander Klein has the story. On the first day of school this year, Lexington City students found more than just teachers and schoolwork waiting for them. They also had access to the newly arrived activity bus. The bus is available to transport students between Waddell Elementary School and Lilburn Downing Middle School every morning and afternoon. In the morning, the bus departs Lilburn Downing for Waddell at 7.40 a.m. The bus returns to Lilburn Downing at 7.55 a.m. In the afternoon, the bus leaves Waddell for Lilburn Downing at 2.55 p.m. and returns to Waddell at 3.10 p.m. If you can get your kid to one school, we can get them to the other. And particularly now in this day and age, you know, Lexington is a great place to live. It's a great city. It's a safe city. But, you know, parents don't always want to have their kids be able to just walk up to a mile one way, either way. Parent Laura Pearson approached the superintendent early this year to discuss the possibility of a shuttle bus. She wanted to cut down on transportation difficulties for her family and many others. It's lovely. Now, we live on the side of town by Waddell, so my middle school son walks with us to Waddell. My elementary school daughter pops into school, and my middle school son pops on that silver bullet shuttle. Tabitha Gann, a parent of two Waddell students, says the bus has been beneficial for both parent convenience and student safety. She says it's especially helpful for parents without vehicles. That's a long way for a five and six year old to have to walk, especially me, me having to walk with them. I have third, I work third shift. And a bunch of the parents here work weird shifts too, and we wouldn't be able to sleep or anything because we'd have to walk to get them and then come back. Lilburn Downing principal Jason White, who has also pitched in to drive the bus, says about 180 to 200 students ride the bus each day. The bus is also providing transportation for student athletic teams and for field trips, including a recent trip to nearby Sarah's Run and Woods Creek. In Lexington, I'm Alexandra Klein for the Rockbridge Report. The school says it doesn't yet have the means to offer a door-to-door -door bus service. However, since the activity bus was implemented, the superintendent said he hasn't heard any requests for door-to-door -door service. Coming up on the Rockbridge Report, we'll show you how Rockbridge County is getting into the giving spirit with their Be a Santa to a Senior program. And later, we'll show you how a Rockbridge County landmark is livening up Friday nights with some country music and dancing. As we move closer to the holiday season, temperatures are going to continue to drop. I'll have your weekend weather forecast next.
party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back. So, Brennan, temperatures have been dropping down a bit this week, and the weather is finally starting to look like December. What will be going on for the rest of the week? Well, James, it looks like these cold temperatures are going to continue, to, are going to continue although this weekend looks pretty sunny. I'll have the rest of the forecast over here. And for our live shot, we have a, we have a live shot of a beautiful downtown Vuna Vista. And now for today's current, uh, regional current conditions, we have a high of 44 degrees and a low of 26. Uh, the barometric pressure is 30.03 inches of mercury. The wind speed is 10 miles an hour, and the, <coughs> um, and the uh, humidity is, is 39%. And now as we look at our current regional conditions, uh, across the board it's pretty cloudy, and uh, most of the temperatures are ranging in the 40, around 40 degrees. Uh, Charlottesville is at 48 degrees currently. Uh, Stanton, Lexington, and Buena Vista are at 42. And it's a bit colder over here in Covington at 33 degrees. Now as we look at our five-day forecast, tomorrow, tomorrow looks to be uh, pretty cloudy again like today with a high of 40 degrees and a low of 22, although this weekend looks pretty sunny. Uh, and on Sunday, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty cold with a high of 35 and a low of 19, which is, the pretty, which is pretty cold because it's the uh, first of the season. And then Monday and Tuesday are going to continue the sun with uh, highs of 45 and 39. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brennan. Well, with this wintry weather, we're all starting to get back into the holiday spirit. But while the holidays are a time of merriment and festivities, they are also a time where staying vigilant is crucial. Lexington Chief of Police Sam Roman cautions people to stay aware during the holidays because he says that local crime tends to increase. In Rockbridge County and Lexington, a rise in crime has occurred roughly around the time period of Thanksgiving to New Year's. Property crime tends to be particularly prevalent, and local landlords are careful to remind their tenants to take extra precautions when leaving town for the holidays. It's also the time of year when we begin making donations to Toys for Tots and other programs that help disadvantaged kids. But seniors have wish lists too. Reporter Katherine Young shows us a Rockbridge program designed to give older folks a happier holiday. Be a Santa to a Senior began as a national program in 2003 and has been an on and off program in Rockbridge County for the past few years. The program, similar to Angel Tree, asks volunteers to buy items off of a senior's wish list. While some seniors have physical or cognitive disabilities, others are just lonely. This year, volunteers purchased gifts for all 160 seniors in Lexington, Buena Vista and Rockbridge County who filled out wish lists. The people in the community went and made a huge effort to really make these gifts special. They didn't just kind of blow through a store and grab some things off the rack. They looked at the seniors wish list and, and really put some thought and effort into it. The program works with agencies and nursing homes in the community to find seniors to participate in the program. Sayer said some families use purchasing presents for a senior in need as a learning opportunity for their children. Not everybody has family around them during the holidays. Some people are very lonely and isolated, and this is a way to, um, to help them. Haley Sigler got involved after hearing about it from Sayer directly. She even got her mother involved as a volunteer. 
She liked that it was easy to share and sign up to adopt a senior as it was all done online. It was an easy thing that we can do and hopefully we'll make an impact on someone's Christmas. Many wish lists included items such as socks, stuffed animals, and Walmart gift cards to buy groceries. It means a lot when you see the types of items that people are requesting. Many people wanted to volunteer with the program, but there were not enough seniors for each person who wanted to get involved to adopt a senior. This community has got a big heart and, uh, and that really came through. I'm sure this program will bring a holiday cheer to the 160 area seniors who will receive presents in the coming weeks. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Katherine Young. If you're interested in participating, the program is still accepting donations of wrapping paper, tape, and stocking stuffers. Coming up next, see how Rayfiend boogies down on Friday nights with good music, good food, and good friends. And later, we'll show you a famous Buena Vista house that's serving up coffee and art for tourists and locals. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school and I didn't do it. My support team never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew who I could become as a person. Surprise! I've been given an opportunity and I'm just thankful for it. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Of all the things you've done with your bike, donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. When it comes to saving uh, money, plus, what? Period. Don't act like a baby. Oh, it's like they're having their own little meeting. This is so humiliating. Be the boss. I'm the boss. What the? Mm -hmm. Power nap. You were saying. And make a budget. Let's get to work. Need a little help? Stacy, read back the notes. I can't read. What's it say? Create a personalized savings plan and get other tools and tips. We can share. You obviously didn't go to business school. At feedthepig.org. If you're looking for something to do with your family on Friday night, consider taking a trip down memory lane or Interstate 81 and visiting Clark's Old Time Music Center in Rafine. Reporter Faith Pinu has the story. Tucked away in the silence of the mountains, the sounds of music can be heard. It is Friday night and folks from all over have gathered for the weekly dance at Clark's Old Time Music Center. It all started 27 years ago. Bruce Clark, a sawmill owner, started playing banjo in his home with a few friends. Then he invited a few more. They started coming every week. That went on for a little while, and people started to come to listen to him. And then, first thing you know, somebody got up and started dancing. And that's how it all got started. That's James Clark, Bruce's son, and the owner of Clark's Old Time Music Center since Bruce died last year. He said people kept coming to those jam sessions and soon packed out Bruce's house. They moved the Friday night dances to the office of the sawmill and gave themselves a name, the Sawmill Band. John Gillum attended the Sawmill Band's first dance in 1991. I just, I just enjoyed it, you know, and I said, well, I'm going to come back next week, and that's 23 years ago, whatever it was, you know, and I just keep coming back, you know. He's not alone. Most people who come to Clark's are regulars. Some travel more than an hour to attend the weekly dances. They bring food, they talk, they dance, they take care of each other. It's just, it's just a good place to go. You know, if you want to bring a small child here or if you want to bring your grandmother, you know, they're all welcome. The club averages about 75 people a week. James said that for eight bucks a ticket, the money they make just about pays for the band and the lights. If we were doing it for the money, we'd have to shut it down. 
As tough as it is to keep up a family-run organization, though, there are no plans to shut down Clark's anytime soon. James's daughter, Heather Davis, said she will take over the music center from her dad. And the family has already decided that Levi, her seven-year-old son, will carry it on after that. It doesn't matter your age, music pulls people together. Um, so I, that's where I see this in the future. Music is timeless. For one local couple, the center means more than just a place to go for a date on Friday night. And I met him. Yeah, we met here. Marsha and Junior Henderson met at Clark's a couple years ago and married soon after that. They're not the first couple to do that either, James said. And they had always said, you can bring people from all walks of life and uh, all different religions and said, music will appeal to all. What started at that first sawmill jam session grew into a community and a legacy that lives on today, every Friday night. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Faith Pinu. Clark's weekly dances are from 7.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. at their Rafin Rockbridge County Dance Hall. All ages are welcome. Dogs have always been known as man's best friend. Service and therapy animals of Rockbridge is proving this theory true once again. The nonprofit organization is part of a national movement. It helps give dogs in local shelters a second chance at finding a forever home by training them as service and therapy dogs. Allison Murtag has the story. She's got her ball Michelle her. Watkins has brought her love of animals from Tucson, Arizona to Rockbridge County. Over the past year and a half, Watkins moved to Lexington and founded Service and Therapy Animals of Rockbridge Incorporated, known as STAR. The nonprofit organization trains rescue dogs to service therapy or service animals for people struggling with PTSD or diabetes. According to Watkins, both types of dogs need to be certified, but therapy dogs require less training and are allowed in limited environments. Watkins contacts local shelters, such as the SPCA, to find dogs that could work well in the program. Watkins performs tests to see if the dogs would be capable of completing the necessary training. If the dog at that initial point is having appropriate response, then you would be able to put them through more training. If a dog passes the initial test, it will live with a volunteer foster family while it learns the skills necessary to become certified. After the dog meets the state and national standards for a service or therapy dog, it will be placed into a home with a person in need. Then it would be collaborating with the community health department here in Rockbridge County to identify homes of persons with PTSD and eventually we would want to add diabetes to the list of how these dogs could help improve for these individuals both quality of life, self-sufficiency, independence. Tara Rohde is the executive director of the Rockbridge SPCA. We don't have that program here right now, so I think it'll be a good thing to have. After placing a dog, Watkins will continue to work with both the dog and the owner on a weekly basis to make sure that the dog is the right fit. Sometimes the best therapy is just sitting there with the comfort and confidence that this animal is there for you, good times and bad. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Allison Murtag. Coming up next, we'll give you the latest sports nationally and closer to home. And we'll take you to a famous Buena Vista landmark, the Coffee Pot House. A redhead <gasps> staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Well, Thomas, you've got prediabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry. 
for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Oh, emojis. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls, just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up that hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, Jane. Welcome back to the Rockbridge Report. So, Aspen, tell us what's been going on with sports. Well, Paige. Things are winding down in the student athletic with Christmas break right around the corner, but Nikki Haley broke some news earlier today about the United States' participation in the Winter Olympics. Haley said it was a, quote, an open question whether South Korea will be safe enough for U.S. teams, given its proximity to North Korea. The last time the U.S. did not participate in the Olympic Games was in 1980 for the Summer Olympics in Moscow. The U.S. Olympics Committee still plans to bring teams to next year's Games in February. In college sports, the Washington and Lee men's basketball team hit triple digits last night. The Generals beat William Peace University 100-73. Over at VMI, the cadets were quite, not quite as lucky. Their men's basketball team fell to Davidson on Tuesday. The Cats defeated the cadets 74-51. The cadets will hit the court again tonight at home against the Southern, Wesleyan, Southern Virginia University Women's basketball team will play tomorrow night at Roanoke at 7. All three schools' basketball teams will play again throughout the month around the holidays. Wrestlers will also stick around for a campus for matches this month. Washington and Lee's Wrestling will host a tournament on the 18th. VMI wrestlers will square off at Lock Haven December 29th. And Washington and Lee's Swimming will pick its season back up in January. VMI and WNL will have their first meet of the new year, January 13th. In high school sports, the Rockbridge County High School men's basketball team has a non-conference game at Liberty on Friday. RCHS won its last game against Al 62-43. The RCHS's women's basketball team also won its last game in Stanton River. The final score was 45-38. to Back to you guys. Thank you, Aspen. Last January, Mark Brightop opened a fine art shop in the aptly named Coffee Pot House. Travelers and locals alike drive by to see this unique local landmark. Reporter Caroline Leek has the story. As the Coffee Pot House first year comes to a close, Unger Brightop says it's been more successful than he had thought. The quirky nature of the building first grabbed his attention last year when he was visiting a friend. After realizing the house was for sale, Raytop decided to pick up everything and move from Arizona. The, the building's shaped like a coffee pot, so it's kind of a work of art in a sense. So uh, it represents kind of uh, an artistic kind of theme. The building was built in 1959 and operated as a restaurant for nearly 20 years. Since then, the coffee pot-shaped building has been a canoe rental store, a fish market, a bar, a gas station, and finally an art studio. Raytop specializes in stone art and metal sculptures. He creates river rock, cairn fountains, maple and cedar slab benches, and amber onyx pieces made from materials from Argentina. Since he first opened, Raytop says he's shifted from making more fine art pieces to using more natural elements because his local customers seem to prefer it. A few well-known local artists like Devin Malore, also display their work in the studio. A lot of people will come in because the building's featured on three different uh, travel websites, and then some people are locals that know the building historically from, you know, going back to 1959. So they'll show up. Freytop has devoted himself to learning more about the history of this architectural so this nod to one of America's most popular drinks. Local legend has it that the building used to be surrounded by a concrete walkway that was painted red to mimic a stove's hot burner. Some road trippers are treated to a vision of smoke flowing out from the spout, completing the homage to a percolator. The building is listed on the Lexington Robbers Studio Tour. 
and appears on travel websites like Roadside America and Atlas Obscura. For the Rockbridge Report, I'm Caroline Leak. That's it for the Rockbridge Report. Thanks for watching with us this fall, and we'll be back in January. Stick around for interviews with two community leaders.